Meniscus tears can cause debilitating pain that at worst leaves you unable to walk. And at best, it might just cause nagging knee pain that just gets annoying over time. In this video, I'll be showing you a quick trick that works in about seven out of 10 meniscus tear cases. This is how to unlock knee meniscus pain in two minutes for massive pain relief. I'm gonna show you a technique where you move your knee with your own hands. And I'm not explaining this technique and why you'll do this just yet. I just wanna to get to the technique for you right now. But watch the video to the end so that I can explain to you with the bone model and the meniscus to show you exactly why this technique works. So you're gonna to need to sit in a chair like this where your foot's flat on the ground. It doesn't have to be a swivel chair, it could be a couch. It just needs to be a sturdy chair where your knee's bent about 90 degrees like this and your foot's flat on the ground. Um, you should ideally take off your shoe because the exercise that follows this, you're gonna to need to be able to slide your foot on the surface that you're on. And if you have a grippy shoe, it's gonna catch the carpet or catch the, the, the surface that you're standing on. Now here's the technique for the right hand. This is correcting what's called a tibial shift, which is what I'll explain to you more towards the end of the video about using the knee model. But you're going to get your hands just like this. You're gonna use the web space of both hands, but one's gonna be higher than the other. The outside hand is slightly higher than your inside hand. So if you think about your kneecap right here, the outside hand's gonna be around the bottom edge of the kneecap. So it should be touching the kneecap on, on this part of your hand right here. And then this part right here should be around your knee with your thumb behind the, the back of your knee where the fold is in your knee. Then you're going to lean your body down and you're gonna push your hands this direction. So like you're, like you're pushing them into each other and if the knee wasn't there to stop it, your hands would go over each other this way with the outside hand going over the, the uh, inside hand right here. I'll show you this for the left leg in just a moment so that you can have a demonstration of that. So then you're gonna push here. This is where your minute starts. So I'm gonna oscillate here, give it some good force. It shouldn't hurt to do this. And you wanna to try to not put a ton of pressure through your leg. I know you're leaning forward, so you kinda of end up putting pressure, but think about putting your weight through your bottom on the chair that you're sitting on so that you don't put too much pressure through your leg. Keep oscillating like this for about 60 seconds. If you wanna count like 30 to 60 seconds, depending on how fast you go. And you should give it some pretty darn good pressure as long as it doesn't hurt you. This should not hurt at all. If it does, you need to adjust the hand position, go slightly up, slightly down, slightly forward, slightly back, a combination of the two. Figure out a way to make it painless. It should just feel like pressure going through your knee joint. After about a minute or so of just some good force through there, then you're done. You may have gotten a pop or a click. Some, some people get a pop or a click when that happens. Next, you need to settle the joint using this exercise. You're going to put your foot out in front of you like this, turn your toes in, and you're just gonna drag your foot with your toes turned in as far back as you can towards your seat. If you can go under your seat, great. If you can't, that's fine. Just go as far as you can. And you're not pushing your foot down into the ground. You're just letting it slide. You're more so turning the toes all the way in as you drag it inwards this way. Repeat this for about another minute, so about 30 reps or so. Maybe each one takes two seconds, you know, a second to come in, a second to reset. And after you've done a minute of this, this should not be painful, this should not be tiring, it should just feel like you're using the muscle kind of in the groin area, inner thigh, but more so the back of the thigh, like the hamstring area, a little bit of both. Nothing should hurt, nothing should cramp. If it does, back off, do it a little easier, slow down, take a break and do it again. And after you've done that, you should have settled your knee in a better position. Now let me show you all of this on the left side so that you can have a good idea. So now this, this hand right here is my outer hand. So it's gonna go above. And my, my right hand now becomes my inner knee hand. And I'm gonna push them this way as if I'm doing this right here. So I'm gonna lean my body forward a bit, but still keeping my bottom, the weight on the chair. And I'm gonna push as hard as I can. My thumb here has gone behind my knee. My other thumb on the outside is not behind my knee. It's kind of, it's not in the fold, but it's on the outside of my knee, of my thigh. And I'm just gonna push here as hard as I can. I'm touching my kneecap right here with this part of my hand and go for about a minute. After about a minute or so of pushing pretty hard, do little bounces, oscillate. Then you can move on to the exercise where you're gonna turn your foot all the way in, toes in, 
and drag your foot inwards. Reset, move back a bit. Reset by turning your foot in, extending your leg out. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight, just comfortably straight. There's still a bend in my knee. The most important thing here is that you're activating the right muscle to help settle the joint in the best position. I'll, I'll explain more in just a moment after I do a few more reps like this. After about a minute of, of this, then you're good to go. You might need to repeat this process. If you felt an improvement, do it again until you get diminishing returns, and meaning until it doesn't really make that much of a difference anymore. Now, hopefully you've gotten some relief out of trying that tibial shift correction exercise and hand placement push thing that you're doing. I call it a tibial shift correction. But let me explain to you why this works. There's some science behind this. It's not just a, you know, some trick thing that I made up. If you think about the knee, this is the right knee. Here's the thigh bone, here's the shin bone, and then this blue thing right here in the middle is your meniscus. What can happen, and this isn't really taught in school, this is something that I've picked up through mentors and ex extra studying that I've done over the years. There's something called a tibial shift. This bone down here is called the tibia, this is the femur, and that bone on the bottom can shift to the sides. Of course, any bends like this, but it can also shift subtly. There's bits of rotation that happens in everybody's knee joint, that's normal, and based on what you're doing, the activities that you're up to, the positions that you sit in, because this, this can happen from just sitting around too, the, the knee joint can shift subtly. And it tends to shift this way inwards. That's why I showed you the shift correction the way that I did. There's a lateral shift correction too, where you push the other way. If you, if you want to try that out, you can. You would just switch your hand placement and push the same exact way. But the most common shift that I see here in the clinic is what's called a medial tibial shift. So because this is the right knee, medial just means inner, inward. So it shifts subtly that way. Now watch that meniscus as I shift it for you. Can you see the meniscus shift? And if you think about the congruency, the way the bones are shaped, here's the end of the thigh bone. It's this round convex surface and the meniscus makes this concave surface. So when the bone shifts over, the alignment is off and it starts to pinch the meniscus and rub it inappropriately. I think that this is why most meniscus tears develop because there's an undiagnosed tibial shift that you can't really see on an x-ray. I mean, I think you can, but I don't think radiologists are looking for it necessarily. And I truly believe that some people go to get an unnecessary surgery when really they just need to have their tibia shifted back into position and then the muscles need to be trained to keep it there. So when you're doing this technique, what you're doing is you're pushing on the inside right here and on the outside right here, there's a kneecap, so you should be right on the edge of the kneecap. Knees bent, of course, and you're just shoving the, the tibia back into the position that it should be. And then when you go to bend your knee on that, on that exercise that I showed you, you're using the hamstrings, the, the medial hamstrings, the, the ones that are on the in, inner part of your thigh, to pull the inner part of the tibia right here in, into a certain position so that it settles. Now, like I said, this doesn't work in every meniscus case. This may not be the main problem in every meniscus case, but I see that people with meniscus tears that come into the clinic very often have a tibial shift. And when we realign the tibial position, it tends to get tremendously better initially. There's still more work to done. Healing a meniscus is a process that takes time, but this can unlock some massive pain relief and allow somebody to start to walk a little bit more normally, put some weight through that leg more comfortably and feel much better in their knees so that they're not unnecessarily taking pain medication, maybe going to get an injection and hopefully not getting an unnecessary surgery. Now getting long-term relief from a meniscus problem requires decompressing the meniscus, which is a process that takes months, usually six months or more. A lot of corrective exercises have to be done in a progression. So you start at a certain level and then move on to other levels as you get stronger. And the meniscus the whole time is able to gradually get stronger itself so that it can take more forces and have these exercises be okay. If you have an acute, flared up, angry meniscus right now, there's certain exercises that, that are good for you eventually, but you should not be doing at that point. This muscle imbalance idea is, I call it a root muscle imbalance. It's at the core of nearly every meniscus tear. I've made a program called the Knee Meniscus Recovery Program that's designed to address this root muscle imbalance where certain muscles are too strong and they're compressing the meniscus so that you can get true long-term relief and get back to doing all the things you love while avoiding surgery, injections, and having to rely on pain medications. You can learn more about this program in the link in the description below.
I've also linked down there a playlist that has all our videos that relate to meniscus problems. In case you need more help, all our videos on YouTube are available for you down in the description below. Hey, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you thought it was, please give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't and turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss any of the videos we put out each and every week. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.